to reconnect. Hi everybody, this is Cindy at the Midway Branch Library and we're going to do some painting today. Um, we are going to do some watercolor experiments. I wanted to let you know that the Midway Library and the Woodford County Library in Versailles are both open with limited hours now, but you can um, come in. Our programs are still all vir virtual and we have a um, reptile show tomorrow at five. So we hope that you all tune in to that as well. And today we are going to play with watercolors, which watercolors are very, very, um, very fun. Um, you can do really detailed, close work with them, or you can do far away, um, just loose, fun work. And that's what we're going to do today is we're going to do some experiments with just some fun watercolor work. I'm going to show you one of the paintings that I did of my own puppy. This is my puppy, Niles. He's now two years old and really big. This is one of the paintings that takes a really long time to do. But today we're going to do an abstract painting and I'm just gonna show you how to do some watercolor techniques and watercolor experiments. And any age can do this. I'll show you the supplies I have. I've got watercolor paper, which Hopefully you'll have something that's similar to watercolor paper because it works a lot better um, than regular paper. It has texture to it. Here's a piece that I'll show you out. See, it has like a texture to it and it grabs the pigment in your paint. And we have a few different colors. I'm just using five colors this time in my palette. So I've got two different colors of blue, a blue-green, kind of a rosy red, and a bright yellow. So that's all we're going to use today, just those colors. But you can use any colors you want because we're not doing anything realistic. We're actually just going to do abstract paintings today. And when we do one abstract painting, we're gonna do two little experiments. The experiment paintings are lots of fun. This is kind of like the abstract painting that we're going to do. It's on watercolor paper, and I'm gonna show you how you can use many different techniques and have lots and lots of fun painting this. Um, I also have rubbing alcohol, which you wouldn't think you would use for painting, but with rubbing alcohol, you can get this technique. Can you see all those neat little dots? Um, you can make all kinds of neat, interesting, interesting paintings with different materials. And then I have rice. So I'm going to show you how you can use rice with paint and you can make all kinds of interesting textures. This kind of looks like the ocean but it's an abstract painting, so it can be anything you want. It could be like a misty mountain forest, or it could be the near the bottom of the ocean. But I used um, rice on that, and then I layered three colors of paint to make this. The underneath color is yellow, but you can't even see it. It just kind of reflects through the other colors and makes it brighter. So I'm gonna show you how to do all of those three different kinds of techniques and three different paintings. So we're going to use rubbing alcohol, if you've got it, just some common household things. We're going to use salt. We're going to use plastic wrap. So just some saran wrap. And it's actually good if it's wrinkly because you want it to be wrinkly. We've also got some paper towels. Just any paper towels will work. I'm gonna wrinkle it up. So I'm gonna show you how you can use that to make some neat techniques with your painting as well. And we will get started painting. So first I'm gonna show you some techniques that you use in basic watercolor painting to make this painting. 
So what we're gonna do is first get our paper all the way wet. That's why it helps to have a nice um, watercolor paper because it won't buckle up too much. This one is a really good one. It's got the handmade deckled edges, but any kind of watercolor paper is great. Um, regular paper will work, and if you don't have watercolor paints, that's fine too. But if you do have watercolor paints and watercolor paper, you'll see that you can get really neat um, effects with it. So this one you can turn this way, this way, or this way because it's an abstract painting. And an abstract painting means it doesn't really show a particular subject. It can be anything your imagination wants it to be. So I'm going to show you how to paint this. And first of all, we're going to start with our blank piece of watercolor paper. And we're going to get it all wet. So this is just plain water. But to get the real misty effects, I'm going to um, get it soaking wet. So I put some paper towels around my work because this can be kind of messy. It's fun, but it's messy. If you've got the kind of watercolors that are not in a tube like these, these are in a tube, but if you've got the kind that are in a pan, you can use those with this technique also. You just need to make sure that you've got plenty of color on your brush because they are more diluted than these are real concentrated. So I've got my paper all wet and the texture that the watercolor paper has is going to make it, um, the colors swirl out with it. So basically to get like these colors in here, we're just gonna use a couple of shades of blue and then we'll run some green and some red into it. But you'll see when your paper is wet, you'll get these real soft flowy edges. So I'm gonna dip it into this kind of blue, which is a nice, they call it a cobalt blue. And I'm just gonna start on one side. Can you see how it feathers out? Now, if your paper's not wet, it won't do that. But if your paper's nice and wet, your colors will spread out. You can put it lighter and darker and just kind of let your colors flow. I'm gonna put some of this darker blue in there too. So I've got two different colors of blue on my brush and you can see how it spreads out. See how the edges just spread out and radiate out? It's a lot of fun to do that. This is called a transparent wash. And you can layer transparent washes on top of each other. I'm gonna put some darker, this is abstract, so it can be anything. You can put darker and lighter and just kind of let your colors spread out. Um, and then, so this is just a basic shape. It could be like a cloud shape or anything that your imagination wants because our story time theme this, this summer reading is about imagination. So this can be anything that you want it to be. Now here's a fun thing I'm gonna do. I'm gonna take this while it's so wet and I'm gonna tilt it. I'm gonna tilt it up. I'm gonna tilt it this way. Can you see how the color is running down? And that will give you all kinds of neat effects too. I'm gonna tilt it the other way. So you can see the pigment is running down and it gives you all kinds of interesting effects that way. See how it looks kind of like little icicles coming down this way? And that's just the neat effect that you can get by letting your color swirl on the paper and then 
turning your paper around. Can you see how those colors are forming more? The colors traveling down on your wet paper. If your paper is dry, your colors will stop running because they won't have anything to run into. But when your paper is wet, it will keep on running and it'll keep on making these real neat shapes. I'm gonna show you real up close. It's really close and really neat. So it looks like a cloud almost. It looks like a cloud with rain coming down out of it. So we've got that effect going. And now to show you another effect you can do with the blue, I'm gonna take my plastic wrap here and I'm gonna paint my plastic wrap with water, just plain water. It's got a little bit of blue to it, but that's fine because that you're doing an abstract painting and you're going to add more blue so you put a little bit of color on your plastic wrap too doesn't have to be perfect you don't want it to be perfect you're just putting some color on there and then rinse off my brush a little and i'm going to take that color side down and i'm just gonna press it down here you can kind of move the color around on your plastic wrap and just keep pressing it down, press it down. Let it sit there for a minute. These are really fun little paintings to do because it's like kind of like science and art together. And you can get all these neat unexpected effects I like watercolor because a lot of the effects in it are very unexpected and then sometimes if you're doing a portrait or like I do horses and dogs mostly for my portraits then um, I want a very controlled effect in some of it and a very loose effect in other parts. So now let's sat there for a minute and now I'm going to lift it up and that gives you another neat effect. So you have another one. I'm going to turn this around too. And that kind of looks like a lighter cloud. But you can see, see now that this is drying, you can see all of those neat streaky looks and those real interesting effects that it has in there. So you can see like darker colors lighter colors, all these neat little designs. It looks like it could be a cloud with rain coming down or it looks like it could be a nighttime forest with the trees all white and um, ghostly in the night. So it could be just about anything. And then this could be a pond or it could be a lighter cloud. That's the neat thing about abstracts is they can be anything you want. So. We are going to add some other colors into this. How about we will add some red. So I'm gonna take a smaller paintbrush. This is just a little one. It's um, number two. And it is a watercolor paintbrush that is round and it has a pointy tip. And you can make smaller details with that. So I'm gonna get my red. This is called alizarin crimson. So see, it looks kind of dark red or maroon, but when you dilute it with water, it turns more of a rosy color. So I'm gonna put a streak through here. As you can see, the paper has started drying, so my streak's not running as much. It's staying more like it was. Now, I'll just put another streak down here. You can put streaks anywhere you want to because it's just using your imagination. And then I'm going to do some stippling. And so I'm going to do some spatter on it. 
And spatter's pretty fun too. I'm gonna get some green. I'm gonna do spatter in the different colors. This is a blue-green, so I just put some on my brush. Kind of dry. I'm gonna get my brush here and go like this. Can you all see this? It's like flip, 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 flip. It's gonna spatter on my painting. And I'm just gonna put green around here. And I'm spattering. Makes your hands messy, see? So your hands get pretty messy with this, but that's what you got paper towels for. So I'm doing some spattering. If you spatter real lightly, you'll get tiny little dots. If you spatter um, with a real wet brush, you'll get bigger dots. So I'm gonna rinse it out again. And we are going to do some blue spatters. I'm gonna do the dark, dark blue. So this is called ultramarine blue. It's very, very dark. And I'm going to spatter that. Some really dark blue. I'm going over all of it, but you could just go over part of it or you could go over most of it, whatever you like. It's your own abstract painting. And abstract, like I said, can be anything. So I'll put a little bit of red in it, the crimson spatters to kind of pop. So we're gonna get the brush with this red on it, the alizarin crimson. You can use any colors you want. These are just the colors I have, but just use whatever your favorite colors are. Like I said, you're not doing something realistic, you're just doing something abstract. I'm gonna put some red spatters on here too. So, messy, messy but fun. And where your paint is still wet, your spatters will spread out more. And where your paint is still dry, your spatters will not spread out. They'll stay really tiny. But now you've got three different colors of spatters in there. And this is a really fast 15 minute painting. So we have a few more minutes left and I'm gonna show you some really neat things that are kind of like science and kind of like art. So here's your spatter, different colors of blue and then a little bit of red in there and you took that plastic wrap and moved your papers around. So it makes all of those real neat effects. Really, really cool effects. And now we're gonna learn how to make another effect. So we're going to use this alcohol. I'm gonna put this down to dry. We're gonna use this alcohol and we're gonna make this. So this is like really fun and easy and you can even like if you wanted to really decorate it up, um, you can take a Sharpie or some kind of um, ink pen that won't um, bleed when it touches water and you could also make designs over that and it would be really beautiful. So this could be like a starting point for another kind of painting if you want or you could leave it just like it is because those little um, swirls in it are really, really intriguing. So they're neat. So we're gonna take another piece of watercolor paper. It's just a little one because we have to, a shortage of time. So we're going to make a small painting here. Again, I'm going to do, I'm gonna take my big, big, big brush. This is a big old sable brush. It's um, 
a size 12. So it's a big, big brush. And I am going to get some clean water because that one is too purple for me. And what we're gonna do is just do, just put your water over your paper again. And this time we're only gonna use one color. It's a really fun experiment. And you can use this as a base for a, nut, a painting with more effects in it, or you could just have it just like it is because it's a real intriguing kind of thing to do. So I'm going to do an alizarin crimson wash. So I'm gonna take a lot of this pigment right here, the alizarin crimson, and my paper's nice and wet, and I'm going to See how the caterpillar's out? Look at that. Isn't that pretty? So your paper's nice and wet. You can get all kinds of neat effects. See that? You can get all kinds of neat effects when your paper's all wet for your watercolors. And then you're gonna add even more neat effects. So this is just one color, just alizarin crimson. You can use, like I said, you can use any color you want, but I would suggest using a darker color so that your design will show up more. I'm gonna keep on going with this. Alizarin crimson. And then, because I want the edges to have a lot of interest because that adds more interest to your painting. On this one, I'm gonna leave a little bit of white at the bottom because it'll give you a composition a little more interest. So, you can see how it like has lots of varying tones in it. And I'm gonna let the color slide a little bit more by putting it down like this and just holding it. But I still want to keep some of that white, so I'm not going to keep I'm not going to let it go all the way to the bottom. All right, I think that is good enough. So now here's the thing which is like art and science combined. We are going to get our alcohol now I'm not going to use a real fancy brush with the alcohol because regardless you would have to wash it out really well so it wouldn't damage your brush. You see you've got your nice alizarin crimson wash there. I'm going to dip my paintbrush in this alcohol and my paper is curving up a little. I have to tame it down a little and then see it makes these beautiful flower shapes. Now here where, it's, where you need to just um, wipe it down in between. If you press down harder on it, it's gonna make a bigger spot. And if you press down more softly, you can make smaller ones. So in the interest of composition, it's nice to have some really bigger spots. See how the alcohol is repelling the paint? And then I'm putting some small spots in here too. This is where you can get all kinds of neat effects just by dipping your paintbrush in the alcohol and then letting it spread out. So you've already got some neat varieties of color under here just with your wash on that wet paper. But now you're getting all kinds of other neat effects. You can do some really small ones. You can do some big ones like that with the side of your brush and just kind of make a random design. And it's just a lot of fun to see how the um, Alcohol repels the paint and it makes these really neat designs. 
So you could use this in all different ways with a painting, or if you got just a small piece of watercolor paper, you could make a beautiful card for somebody too. So you're just getting all kinds of neat, random, some big, some small. Some of you wanna just like, just put your tip of your brush down like a little point. So there you go, painting number two, all done. And this just shows you what neat effects you can get with alcohol and watercolor paints. So you get your watercolor paints. This, this stuff is so fun and it's so easy. You don't need to, you don't need to draw. You don't need to know how to draw or how to make anything realistic. It's just fun, and you can get all kinds of great effects with it. So we're going to put this one over here also. And then we're going to do the last one. Now the last one you'll have to have a little more patience with because you see these little grains of rice that were on there? Well, you basically have to leave that on until it's completely dry, which for me, I did it last night, and then it was completely dry today. So that gives you those little grains. Can you see them where the little grains of rice were? And then I took them off. The rice absorbed the pigment, and then I let it sit overnight and had to be real patient because you do want to see what it looks like, but you just have to be patient let it sit, and then you can brush them off when it's completely dry and it'll leave like neat little things. But the um, also what's really neat with this painting is just the way the colors work together. So the way the colors work together is basically like half of this, or even more than half of this um, painting because the colors the pigments repel each other and swirl around together. So what we're going to do is we're going to use yellow first and then green and we're going to drop in some blue and then turn it from side to side while your paper is nice and wet. And that'll give it these really neat textures, kind of like that first painting that we did. And then when we're finished doing that, we're just going to Drop a few grains of rice down there. You can see it more on the dark part right here. So you can see that texture there. So we'll get started now. It won't take very long. I'm just gonna paint this little square with water. And then I'm gonna paint it. This is gonna be a super fast painting. We don't have much time. So I'm gonna paint it with this bright, bright yellow. That's a very bright yellow, isn't it? Super sunny, super sunny yellow. So we're doing this bright yellow and then I'm gonna get some of that blue-green blue color it's called fallow. It's, it's like a P-H-T word, fallow green, which is a blue green. And we're going to run that over this yellow wash. That's called wet into wet painting. So see, right now it's pure yellow. And then we're going to get some of this dark green, which we haven't used very much. Gonna get some of this. I'm gonna change my water over here again because this is more of the shade we're going for. I'm gonna get this dark green and run it into the yellow. So you can see how it has a neat effect already. The way it spreads out. I'm just gonna drop some color in, drop some more color in. I want some variety in tone, so it's gonna be darker and lighter. I'm not gonna get it the same all over. I'm just kind of 
pushing my brush into the color. And you can see the paper's like super wet, so it is making that color feather out a lot. So now this is kind of looking like a forest or it could be like an undersea cavern or something. It's, it's really um, a neat look. Again, it's an abstract painting and it's gonna change and evolve as we're doing it. But this is like a really fast five minute painting. So if you kind of do your brush like this, you can see how it does lighter tones and darker tones. And now we're gonna drop in some dark blue, just a little bit, just to give it some interest. Now this painting's super wet, which is what we want because we want our eyes to stick to it and we also want it to swirl around. Again, gonna have to get your hands messy, but it's worth it. I just put a little bit of dark on one side and left another side lighter. And here's the fun part. This creates all kinds of patterns and with the colors, the pigments mixing together. It looks really pretty. See how it makes all of those different colors go together? And here's why you want your paper towel underneath, because it is messy, but it's real fun. See that? And this looks like the deep, deep down in the ocean. It's really pretty. So the colors are almost down to the bottom. And I just tap it there to get it to go a little bit faster. You see how it looks real, the neat effects that you can get? When the paper is very shiny, that means your paint is real wet. And when your paint um, looks dull and not shiny anymore, it means it's dry. So here's almost our little five minute painting, a little abstract with blues and greens, a little bit of yellow peeking out. And now I'm going to use my paper towel and add a little more texture down here. You want your paper towel just wrinkled up. So your paper towel's wrinkled up and it almost looks like this could be an ocean with a coral reef down below. So you see how you get that neat texture with your paper towel? Again, you don't need to know how to draw anything to do these things, and it's really, really fun. So in these dark parts, I'm just going to do the last step, and that is just sprinkle a little bit of rice, or you can do salt. You can do rice or salt. The, the thing is, with either rice or salt, you do have to wait till it gets dry. So I'm holding the edges down. And it's very tempting to take this off before it dries, but it's good to just leave it. So I'm just gonna leave mine like that. And it looks weird right now, but I promise in tomorrow it's gonna look really neat because it'll look more like this. See where the little bits of rice were here? Well, they'll leave like, they'll lift up the pigment from the dark parts and then they'll leave like little reflections of rice grains, little neat shapes. So this is one that I did last night and it's all dry now. And then I can't lift this one up now because it's got the rice on it. But it is ready to go for tomorrow. So I hope that you've enjoyed this. I've had a lot of fun doing these little watercolor experiments, and I hope that you will join Kids Quest for the rest of summer reading. 
Thank you very much, and have a great day. Thank you. Bye.